please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Come, let us seek rest at the altar of God, where even the infant can find comfort and protection, where even the weak can find peace and justice. Blessed are they who dwell in God's presence, where even the lily may grow in glory, where even the grass may be clothed with life. Let us praise the Lord. Now, let us reaffirm our faith by reciting together the Apostles' Creed as printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our reading today is from Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 18 through 29. Um, in my reading, I felt that verse 15 set that up nicely, so I'm going to begin with that. Be careful that no one is deprived of the grace of God and that no root of bitterness should begin to grow and make trouble. This can poison a large number. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given if even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for they did not escape when they refused the, warn, the one who warned them on earth. How much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase yet once more indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming God, fire. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the ushers to please come forward as we continue to worship God together. We remember that God gave abundantly his sacrificial love in the words that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Since we have received so well, what might we return to God now?
Gracious God, all that we have is yours. And so this day we return back to you a portion that you've already given to us. We pray, Lord, that you might bless these gifts, that they become a good work, the embodiment of who you are, your spirit, out in a world that desperately needs you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, let the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Lord, as the one who stands before you now, I pray that you would use me. That either because of me or in spite of me, still your word will be faithfully proclaimed and your name glorified. Through Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. I didn't think about this before the 8.30 service, so uh, I have a chance to think about it now. And if you are one who likes to pray along and uh, you also are one who likes to mark your hymn book ahead of time, we're going to pray a prayer out of the hymn book. It's also in the Book of Common Prayer that I have in my hands. And it is number 890. 890. So we will do that a little bit later. But just in case you wanted to mark it now, you can... Do so at this moment. It's number 890. Comparatively speaking, as we hear uh, Hebrews again this morning, we are on a four-week tour through three chapters in Hebrews. And the first two weeks, they went easy on us a little bit, I feel like. It was by faith, and then we insert uh, the story of our life together as found in Scripture. And then we come to this somewhat confusing passage that compares two mountains. One is Mount Sinai, the other one is Mount Zion. And Mount Sinai was that place where Moses went up to visit with the Lord and we remember our scripture and our Sunday school teachers telling us that Moses himself went up to be with the Lord. No one else went with him. No one else was allowed to go with him. And even the fact that there might be a part of the herd that bumps up against that mountain, uh, that was not allowed. Moses was the only one that was allowed on that mountain. And uh, they were supposed to stone that animal to death. We've come a long way being in God's presence. As uh, I was attending one of the Sunday school classes this morning, and we were talking about the very beginning and the relationship that God had with us, but that relationship also was meant to be with each other and what that meant for our lives. And we considered the... Um, the bright topic, why suffering happens, that question why, might ask another question this morning or perhaps even a prompt to think about the scripture that we have this morning. How would you finish the sentence one more time? Maybe it's not even a sentence. Maybe it's more of a discussion. Maybe it, it's a writing prompt that one more time, what is it that you do, get to do one more time? What is it that God does one more time? I can remember my mother telling me, if I have to tell you one more time to clean up your room, insert punishment here, one more time. There's also this kind of notion that we have as humanity that we are growing in a way that we are continuing to progress. And, and maybe the seasons of our lives have something to say about that. That yes, there's a lot of progress that has been made in our lives, but also things are very cyclical. Our days are cyclical. Our seasons are cyclical. There are things that we do that we haven't necessarily mastered yet. 
And if we think about if we think about how we might learn things and how knowledge comes to us, it's taught, it's um, it's modeled. We learn certain things and then we move on, but some things we keep coming back to over and over again, like eating every day. Who wants to eat one more time in their life? Who wants to take a good nap one more time? Who wants to have a really good restful sleep one more time? You can tell I feel like I'm lacking sleep at the moment. Who wants to exercise one more time? Everybody puts their hands down. I see that. (laughs) One more time. It's a chance for us to be together and worship one more time every single Sunday and sometimes throughout the week we get a chance to gather here, we get a chance to hear great music, we get a chance to sing and I don't think any of us, especially as I'm facing some singers here, they think, well I just got that one perfect, I don't need to sing anymore. No, singing is something that we get to do and we do it one more time. By contrast, Mount Sinai was the place where God's presence was made known to Moses so that Moses could disseminate the information to God's people. God's presence in Mount Zion, which is what we heard Michelle read earlier. Mount Zion was a, is a place. It's not only a present place, but it's a future place. It's a, a kingdom of sorts. It's a kingdom that we hear is going to shake only to let us know that the created things around us are the things that can be shaken. Heaven and earth can be shaken, but God's kingdom can't be shaken. One more time, we hear that scripture again for our lives and it starts to build in us what is God speaking to us today because as a community, we hear God's word together and we might hear the same Hebrews lesson years from now. And it might speak something else into our lives. That's the living word that we get to receive together one more time. Mount Zion is a place where we notice instead of a Lord who is more distant, perhaps, as we have read over Scripture, comparatively speaking at least, we have a God who is willing to visit us in the flesh. We have a God who would put on human flesh to let us know that as we have questions about suffering and other things that take up our days, that this God aims to be with us all the time. You might say even one more time as we recognize that this is the case every single morning when our thoughts and notions turn to a God who has created each and every one of us who has loved us all of our lives. This is a God, instead of being on a mountain that's only able to receive one prophet who is then going to express God's word to the rest of the people, this is God's living word walking in the person of Jesus among the people. You know, there's a story that's in the Gospels. It's about this woman And she'd been bleeding for 12 years. I don't know what that's like to be suffering like that for 12 years. And yet, this is what she has, a disorder. And many pastors, including me, like to point out to all of us that even to risk herself to be in a crowd with Jesus or a rabbi, another man, in her condition is something the imagination can't really fathom because women who were bleeding like that in Jesus' day and age didn't necessarily go out. They were considered unclean. And so therefore, Jewish law would have kept them away from other people. Now just knowing that fact and knowing the fact that she bled for 12 years How long was she outside of the community where people loved her that now she finds herself in a crowd that is moving moving along and jostling in such a way that they're so crowded that Jesus is bumping in 
and amongst other people. The woman has the thought, if I can just reach out and touch his garment, the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. I will. Her faith made her well. Power left Jesus that day in order to heal her. People love to point out, and I think it's no small mystery, no small miracle that this woman was healed on that day. And yet I also will tell you, can you imagine a God who is willing to be among God's people, bumping up and next to each other? You know, sometimes when we get together and it's hot outside, it could be a sweaty mess that it doesn't smell too great. And yet this God comes in the human flesh to be with us, to be among us, to, to have the stink and aroma of all of us around to love us beyond what we can imagine for ourselves. To one more time play a role in our lives that is salvific. That brings us to our knees. That has us pray once more. That has us worship in truth and in beauty for the common good. You know, Michelle read that last part of the verses. It's, it's been in our minds. You may, you may want to take it out, but it's this consuming fire that who God is that consumes us but does not burn us, consumes us with the fire of love in a way that we might know God a little bit differently than we did before, knowing that this God would have the thought to be among us, to want to know desperately what's on our minds, what's on our hearts, to desperately share our lives with God, to know what kind of desperate love it is that would have God put his only son on a cross that was meant for us, taking the weight of its shame away so that we might be connected and one with God. What are the things that you get to do one more time because of who God is? That might be something you might mull over as you get to eat one more time sometime today. Maybe that's lunch. I don't know. One of the things I get to do, and I'd like for us to do this now, is that uh, sometime in the morning, I would like to tell you that as soon as I get out of bed, this is my practice every single time I get out of the bed in the morning. However, there are days when I'm rushed for time, when I think I'm rushed, and I don't pray as I ought to, but on the days like this morning where I get up and the first thing I get to do is to, is to sit with the prayer book open and pray. I pray a, a moment of confession. That prayer that, that we're going to pray together in just a moment is a, a prayer of confession that I pray every morning. Confessing Jesus as Lord, but also confessing my own life is not as good as I would want it to be based on the sinfulness of what my human heart is and that we come confessing as a people who follow Jesus that Jesus is in fact Lord but that we also confess our sins so that we can notice one more time God has forgiven us I don't know why I do this, but I, I like to get down on my knees whenever I pray in the morning. I don't know if you all do that or not, but it just seems like that's the, the prayer position of someone who's confessing Jesus as Lord and then also confessing our sins. And so if you would pray with me, the prayer is on 890 in your hymn book. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in love, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry. Christ, have mercy on us and 
forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, grant to all your people pardon and peace that in your great mercy we may be forgiven all our sins so that we might worthily magnify your holy name this day and always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. seated. Lord, we commend all of our prayers, the ones we've named out loud and especially the ones that are known only to you by our hearts. And we lift them up to a God who is able to do all things, far more than we can even ask or imagine. Lord, we also commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom, your eternal kingdom through Christ our Lord, who taught his disciples and us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Indeed, there is something about that name, Jesus, that makes everything in life complete, even though there might be broken places still. So we are given the charge to leave as the body of Christ, full of God's blessing, so that we may live our lives in such a way that those to whom love is a stranger will find in us generous friends. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen and go in peace.